you don't like i mean it was just kind of like very it was just to the point you know mm. we, we we you know introducing them to what's going on you know what's all that what's all that you know you when know? you like smelling something and you like doing like this trying to like pick up the notes yeah <laughs> Yeah, we glad y'all tuned in, man. For nothing, for nothing, and um, uh, what is that? A nothing. A nothing. What? A nothing. This is another. It's another and one, all in one. It's a country slang. Where are you from? Nothing. A lot of my family's from Georgia. <laughs> Such a liar, dog. <laughs> a lot of my family is from down south. <laughs> Never met these individuals. Like, really? Down, 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 I'm sorry, for anybody who is watching that is from the great state of Georgia, I apologize. No, to you. don't don't apologize because I do got family down yonder. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my grandfather knew. Yeah, I'm down there. <laughs> yeah, we glad you tuned in, man. I think we got some good stuff to talk about. We got to have a little fun, you know, on the show. Because sometimes it gets a little heated. And there go uh, your phone as Shante gets okay. a little um, beside herself. Look at the text and oh, the yeah. emails. Yeah. That's good. That's good for ratings. So anyways... Um, Ratings. This is not listen, listen. ABC. Okay. Okay. Now, now. Right. That's good. That's real good. Y'all see how that's real? That's real life. That thing happened for real. People get text messages for real. If you want me to stage it, then it can't be reality. I call this reality podcasting. If you want it to be staged, then it, it switches from being real to being staged. And I just, you know, that's not that's not it. Anyways, like I was saying. I got family from down young, and uh, and I'm glad that y'all tuned in on this one right here. You know, I really don't know why that bothers me so much. What? It drives me crazy. What? Your phone. Why? I think your phone is just a oh point of contention. You're, you're changing your controlling area. You see that switch? I'm trying to introduce the podcast. She introduces her feelings and thought processes about my phone. She just she swung it in and started controlling the narrative. Yeah, yeah, it happened. In real life, woo side yourself. You know, woo side your mama. <laughs> You're watching this, mama. <laughs> Y'all, yeah, listen, man. So, I think you had a couple of good topics. Um, again, you chose them um, that you wanted to discuss. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's that bull crap. <laughs> Do not do that. Don't do what? You're trying to make it seem like I control the narrative. You asked me what did I want to discuss and I picked it. Now you're making it seem like to them that I control the narrative somehow and picking out today's son. I, I just said a couple of topics that you picked. This you're very you're getting very aggressive with your language because with the threats, I'm so tired with the physical threats. of this subtle undercurrent oh stuff God. that you do. <laughs> I knew that was gonna, I knew that was gonna get up under her skin for real. Ha! <sighs> All right, baby. Hey, 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 hey. Stay over there. What you gonna say? Hey, hey. Stay, stay over there. So, anyways, what was the topics that you guys? Got, I don't know that you that you, you picked. No, you control that narrative. Come on, don't be like that. Control. Don't control the narrative. Control your emotions. How about that? 
Ooh, I'm so oh glad God. you're having such a field day. <laughs> Oh Lord and Jesus. Make, and making me Ooh. seem out to be just this. Ooh. Like what? Yeah. You're doing a great job. Great job of what? It's okay because when the cameras go off, you live with me. I know. I know. You I should love be wise. you. I love you. You should be wise. I, lo- I love you. You. You should are the apple. The whale. Ow. Why would you want to okay. pinch one? I'm going to twist my thumb. To knowledge. I would want to twist my thumb. That. How would you want to twist my thumb? I want to twist it off. Why? Because you're so ridiculous. What did I do? Mm-hmm. That. What did I do? That right there. What is that? You know what that is. A problem undefined is undefeated. You are the problem. Tell me. I've defined Tell you. me what I did then. I just am figuring out if how I'm to defeat problem, you. If I'm a problem, tell me what I did. I'm trying to figure out how to defeat you. <laughs> that was mean, by the way. Mm-hmm. I want you to know. But so what were the topics that you chose for your view? What we decided on... Okay. We. All right. However you want to spend it. <laughs> ah, you're driving me crazy. All right, man. I'll just play. I'm just playing for real. What are the topics that we discussed that we want to talk about? If the about? Bible app go off one more time. I know. I don't want you to do what you're doing right now. Though. If the Bible app. Can I get my phone? I you tell not. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You I, are busy right now. I don't want you to do what you're doing. Why not? Because you you're being very aggressive and forceful. No, that's my I, property. I, silly rabbit, you don't have any property. What? Everything belongs to us together. What are you talking no, about? No, no, it's my cell phone. You don't have anything. That's my cell phone. <laughs> that's my cell phone. Every married man knows you own nothing. That's my cell phone. This is our cell phone. That's that's toxic. This is right ours. There, that's toxic. How? Because. You're very possessive and we controlling. Pay this phone bill. That's 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 my cell phone. When you look up the Verizon account, whose name is on there? I don't know. That's my cell phone. Lancaster. That, no, what you're doing right so now? Technically, it's my cell phone. Do you want to go down the line? That means I don't have anything else. <laughs> <with> cell phone. <laughs> Technically, you want to go down the line because, you know, the businesses and, you know. How are you going to get to work? I just buy a new car. <laughs> With what? All of your money. Can I get my phone back, please? Duh. Could I? I have access to everything. Why? Could I get my ours, phone back? Our phone. Oh, my God. Our phone has been doing too much. This is, this is ridiculous. I just want to get into the subject matter. And I was asking. How much this. sex should be expected? In a marriage. I think it's agreed upon. I read this thing the other day. I think it was on the shade room. And and they were talking about um there was this youngest younger girl had tweeted and she wasn't married and she had said she couldn't wait to get married so she could have sex with her husband every night. And all of the men and women married were commenting like, Child, like you have lost your mind if you think that that's what marriage is like and then the one girl was like don't have no kids talking like Mm. that and so it was funny to see all of the married people comment and all the single people were like wait are y'all serious and all the married people were like if that's that's what y'all y'all think that that when you get married is when all this this open door policy sex happens like no man it's, it's, that's a false, that's a false reality. We had false more reality. sex before we were married. Oops, we weren't supposed to be having sex, but we did. That, there was way more sex happening prior to that than actual. Well, I think it's, it, I think it was a better way of putting it is, is before our first son was born. Oh, yeah, God. You know what I'm saying? Like, before you ever were pregnant, <clears throat> I feel like it was just different, man. Kids change the whole, the whole dynamic, dynamic of everything. And right now we're going through a dilemma because our our youngest son wants his own room. He does. And we have enough space for him to have his own room. Mm-hmm. But the bed we're thinking about how do we the bedroom that's available is the bedroom that's right next to our bedroom. And I and we don't want him to hear that headboard banging up. <laughs> <laughs> now don't be trying to make it seem like no, we no that ha- that happens. The headboard our headboard does not do that. Babe, you need to. Our headboard doesn't. Do oh, we that. got a new bed. Yeah, no. So bed, what, what, like, we, what we worried about him hearing? Did. Noises. 
I don't want him to hear any noises. I'm back on the door. Mom. No, I tell you what's more, more, I'm more concerned. Oh with God! Is yes. we got locks on the door, right? And so we, I, we, we be play, playing this game with them. <laughs> called the last hit. God. And so we we be get trying to get the last hit before they go to sleep, and I hit them and run back to my bedroom where they hit me and run the back, door. and I lock the door. And the other day, dog, the youngest one, he picked the lock. He picked the lock to the bedroom. I was like, oh my! And Julius God. looked at me, and I looked at him, and, and we both were communicating the same thing to one another. Like that's all that needs that, to happen. That's it. There, there's nothing else for us to do now. That's that, him to brother. pick that lock and see something, dog, that mess around oh, Tane his whole Lord life. Jesus. To did you ever walk in on your parents having sex? I did. I never saw my parents having sex, but I heard them having sex, and it was the worst. I did. I walked in on it. It was the. It was like I used to hate. I had to cover my ears up, and my mom and dad had separate bedrooms. True story. They had mm. separate bedrooms, and I always knew when my mom went across the hall. It was like, ugh. You knew what they was going to do. Yeah, and I was just, oh, I hated it. And I was at the way other end of the hall, but I mean, I just knew they were in there having sex. It was gross. Wow. You did not want to know that your parents were having sex, even though I knew that's how I got on earth. But so, I mean, how much is this whole, how much should you be expecting? I mean, I think none. Start at zero, and then let's just build from there. I think going into... Mm. An expectation like, nah, it's got to be at least once a week. Like, you literally have no idea what a week holds. So you don't think you could... So I've heard people, you know, different, you know, ends of the spectrum on this. I've heard people say, you know, you you plan it. You schedule it out. That's That's, crazy, ain't it? Yeah, like, I don't want scheduled Monday sex. So so it might work for somebody, though. I mean, again, so to answer your question, whatever works, but... The schedule thing, man, and I know people who do that. Like they Thursday night is their night, and I'm just in my mind. I'm thinking like, what does that look like when Thursday has been? It's like when you schedule it, and it's like, okay, I'm gonna. Well, you don't think a your 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 mind and body could get programmed or used to it, and so and so you start expecting it and craving it and wanting it. I don't like date night. I know people who say, regardless of what's going yeah. on, t- th- Wednesday nights is our date night. Do you think, though, it can become... Um, Routine. And, and the rigmarole of it all? Religious. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but... Like, it just becomes, like, a thing you do. Like, okay, Thursdays we have sex. Is, is, every, like, is, that? is that always bad, though, is the question. So I think a lot of times we look at, you know, things that you do religiously as it has to be a bad thing. But the question is, is is everything you do religiously a bad thing? And so... No, and, you brush your teeth religiously or you should, you know, brush your teeth daily and every night. And I mean, no, I think that it keeps your gums healthy. Um, I don't know of having sex scheduled. But if, if date night... Keeps the walls healthy. That was ridiculous. <laughs> That was Does ridiculous. it keep the walls healthy? Listen, but but so if date night is if scheduling because I've heard <clears throat> counselors and marriage counseling and I've heard this often yeah. where people are like, no, you got to schedule date night. Like regardless, I don't care what's going on. You got to make sure you're setting time aside for you and your spouse to connect. It is vital, and I mean we've had this conversation. We don't do a great job at setting this this date night. Now, what I will say is being entrepreneurs, I feel like our life sometimes is date-ish because if me and you wanted to today, after filming, we could go get ice cream. Yeah. We could, you know, go to Starbucks and, <clears throat> excuse me, get coffee. We, I mean, we could kind of do, so I think it's... When you got freedom. When you have freedom, it's a little different. I think that when you're both you working, some latitude. you know, nine to fives or or your your schedules are really strict, then yes, I know my cousin, uh, both my cousins actually, they do this uh, every month, they do a 24 hour date. I'm talking about sex. We was just using a date night as an opportunity to talk about religiously. So I think the the 24 hour date, you know, that, that, that hotel away from the home sex, it's way different. I mean, hotel sex is way different, especially when you got kids. If you don't have kids, it might not be no. Oh, if you ain't got no kids, and you can y'all can hang from you can have a swing set coming down from the ceiling, and then the, the harness coming from the back of the you door. Mad. You're very nasty. 
I need you, I need for everybody to know you're very nasty. I am a married woman. You are. You okay. are. Yeah, that was nasty. Who though. has harnesses two boys. and swings? Is I nasty. can't have them because you know. King. They, I come in the room. King gonna be swinging from the swings. I'm gonna look, mom, and then I'm gonna explain that. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Just nasty. <laughs> you already got in there in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Now the last episode we talked about oversharing. Didn't I didn't say I didn't say anything. Look at you. I didn't say Look anything. About the oversharing. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Keep my business off the internet. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I kept it. I kept it. Kept it cool. Kept it cordial. So what's when's too much though? What's the expectation? Sex. Again, I think it has to do with each couple. I, um, men are physical horn dogs. Y'all can bone every day, all day. That's not true. Oh, it is. That's not true. Men that's, that's not can true. have sex right after playing basketball. Men can have sex after an argument. Men can have sex in the morning, late at night. <clears throat> y'all can have sex. Y'all can pull over and want to have sex. Like y'all can have sex whenever. The penis is something that is just on an autopilot of penetration. So the penis is not attached to the emotion of a man. No. That's why I believe that men can have, they can have an affair and they never, ever have an emotional attachment to the other woman. That's why they go back home to their wives. Mm. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying I, I believe. I believe when they say, man, I didn't have no feelings for it. I really believe that. Men are physical, driven Creatures. And so the vagina is driven by the emotions of a woman. I believe a saying. woman's brain controls her badge. Yes. If she's not, and I'm not saying that, you know, you don't have some freaks of the week out here that just as horny too and get turned on and don't care about nobody. You have your exceptions. But women, you know, they're stimulated mentally and emotionally first. So well, then getting cheeks is easy. That's, that's like. If you got something, if you bag her emotionally and mentally, now, it's, having sex is like... That's, that's just a byproduct? Byproduct of what you captured. That you captured her heart, you captured her mind, you captured her emotions. Right. You're going to capture the cheeks. That is so ridiculous. So what? What you just said. It's, that whole that is situation. the truth. Now, men, I don't have to have no emotional bond with you. You see my booty, and you're like, yes, ma'am. Clap. Oh, now. Now, who's ridiculous now? Who is ridiculous right now? Clap. Okay. David, don't. When you laugh, he'll keep going. No, it doesn't It is. But don't, those are the stark differences between the two. So when you're talking about how much sex should be expected, a, man, a married man can have sex every night. So, okay. So what about this? Let's transition the, the, the conversation a little bit. So when you're talking about, like, how much sex... To be um, accept, expected, we believe from a biblical perspective, y'all. Like, I know we laugh, we joke, you know what I'm saying? But At the end of the day, we are pastors. That's right. And we try to view things from a biblical lens. So, scripture talks about um, rendering unto your spouse due benevolence. Oh, That's King okay. James version. What's Julius's version? Due, due, due benevolence is, is, is uh, duty booty. Not and so duty D U T Y yeah D U T Y so do benevolence is duty booty that's, meaning that's, it's your duty to give up the booty it's your duty to give up the booty and so wow. watch this though so do benevolence so here's a question benevolence is like you know an offering or something that you're giving to somebody in need right they have a benevolence fund <laughs> so you're in need yeah. of cheeks so yeah they have a benevolence fund at church. And that fund is for people who are in need. Okay. And scripture says, do benevolence. Who determines what the need is? So in a, in a benevolence fund, it's clear the people who, who are in need of whatever type of assistance they're in need of. Yeah. Right? So but when it comes to sex, it, am, I, am I allowed to tell you as my wife? That you need sex. No, I need some sex. Or, or is it up to you to determine when you need to give it up? Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. But the scripture says, render unto your, your, your uh, spouse due benevolence. Meaning benevolence that is due. Who is the one who determines 
what is due and when it's due. Who determines that? Well, when you talk about booty like it's rent, I don't like that. I understand, but it's not. But I'm saying, am I allowed to come to you and say, babe, look, I need, I need, I need some action. Like it's been a minute. Like I need yeah, some action. I think, I think and are you allowed say. to say to me, <clears throat> no, I don't, I don't think you need any. I don't think you. And so I, 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 I decline. <laughs> Are you are you allowed to do that as my spouse? So I, the, your verb is just saying allow. Like I don't like any of this the way you're talking. What do you, so am I, is it okay for me to come yes. to you and say, hey, and 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 then is it okay for but you I'll, to turn I'll around and say, question. no, I decline. I ask this question though, and I think it, it could be unfair if you're asking that every day and every night. And you're like, yo, I want something. You're like, oh, we just had sex this morning. And you're like, yeah, but I need it again. Like, right. man, he could be a sex addict. And that's what I was, that's it. That's it right there. That's it right there. Because at, at some point, you got you might be like, now wait a minute, bro. Or she could be on her cycle and you're like, I don't care. Like, Ooh. what? Running red lights out here? No, it happens. Y'all running red lights oh, out here? It, right. Stop. No, but it no. happens in, the, yeah. in people married and unmarried. They do whatever they're gonna do. They throw a towel down and go to town. But what I'm saying is like we that to me is starting to encroach a little bit on um, your rights as a spouse. Yeah, man. You keep coming at me talking about I want Come something. On, like bro, like man, like, your, the expectation is morning and night. It's like yeah. And so now you're saying it's going beyond need. This isn't do benevolence right here. Like so, don't get it twisted, but John. I say, like, like, no, I need it every day. And I was, I would, I would, I would, I would probably challenge that. As a man, you would. I would challenge that. Wow. I would, I would, I would challenge that. And so, duty booty isn't an opportunity for a spouse to be abused. Mm. Let's let's make sure we're clear about that. It's not an opportunity for you to to need your um, gross uh, addiction satisfied by your spouse and then you're calling it duty booty because you keep running up to her talking about it's time it's time <laughs> i need some more i need some more like that's not that i would even challenge i mean in a marriage and again this is not everybody's marriage is different but man like sex every single day and y'all raising kids like there's what else y'all got going on to where you're like i need to have sex Every single day, there may need to be some, maybe some other conversations, and that's what that I'm saying. Need to be had now. If y'all are both in congruence oh, with yeah. that, y'all both just always want to get down. Then it is what it is. Get down. But if one person is like, I think like always needing it, I would question and it. You if have it's, women, it could flip. You got a, a man that's not like that, and a woman that's just like, nah, drop them draws, let's go. And so, like, the, hey, Jesus. I would question is, is it sex that you need, or do you need to address a, some, another issue? Some other issues, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so your due benevolence at that time might not be sex. If your due benevolence might be, I'm gonna, we're going to hook up with a counselor. Yeah. Because at the rate that you're going, you're encroaching upon... My liberties at and this I, and point. And I'm gonna tell you, like, it's crazy because you can have someone that's like, you know, no, I just, my, I just like sex, and I'm married, so I want to have sex every day with my wife. And then the wife is like, man, but I don't have a sex drive like that. My sex drive is not matching that, and so now at this point, um, and we talked about this. Uh, Fred Price's wife has said they basically was having sex every day. Yeah, and she said she was doing it by faith. And I'm thinking in my mind, like, by faith means what, man? I mean, she didn't feel like it. And by faith, she did it anyways. And at and what point me, is like that, that toxic? Right. What po at what point is it toxic? Because, because here's the deal. What you can't do is to have no sex drive at all. And your spouse wants to have sex. Yeah. And then if you decide to have sex anyways... Because your spouse ain't getting up because you already don't have a sex drive. And then you decide to do it anyways. And then you run around talking about it's, to it's toxic because you didn't want to have sex and you did anyways. She said she was doing it by faith. In my mind, as a woman, what that meant was she, there was times when, when, when Bishop Price came to, into that bed and she did not feel like it. And she did it anyway. And I guess the and for me, that is a that is. That is a little toxic. I think the context of it could make it toxic. 
If y'all ain't having sex for months. No, she's saying that, that they had sex every day. Right, so I'm just quantifying, like, qualifying, you know what I'm saying, that. Like, yes, this could be toxic if we're having sex all the time. And now I have to now tap into times when I don't want to, when we're already having it all the time. And you're expecting me to do it anyways. That could be toxic. Yeah. But if we ain't had sex in six months, no, no, and, no. And, and, and I do it anyways, and then I got the audacity to run and tell somebody he's making me have sex when I don't you want to. You ain't had it in six months. Yeah, that, you those, know what I'm saying? Those are deeper issues. I was uh, this one young lady who's like, I guess you could call her a blogger or whatever on the internet. Um, her and her husband, they had sex every day for a year. They because like or maybe they weren't they were disconnected and she was saying like you know to get reconnected they were saying they're going to have sex every day for a year and somebody in the audience it was like on the Black Love Doc series and somebody asked her well what about your period and then she was like you ain't never heard of a towel or something like that and there the audience was like okay to each of some but for me it's it's almost like could it be if you do if you do adopt the by faith um. And it's really for women because, again, and I could be wrong, but I just don't see a man turning down sex. I don't see a man looking at his wife like, honey, not tonight. I, got, I mean, that it, is, it happens. It does happen. But it women, happens. I would say women probably fare on that side of the fence a little more because we do. We have hormonal um, imbalances monthly. We have our cycles. Mm -hmm. We got kids hanging off of us. You know what I mean? You just, you, you got a house to take care of. And so emotionally... You know, you may not be or hormonally there. So when it comes to this having this sex as much as your spouse would like, and I think that's more the question. I think the answer. How much would your spouse like to have sex? I think the answer is, is be healthy as a human. And I think then your expectations in other areas of your life will be healthy. Mm -hmm. if, if you're healthy as a person, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? If you're unhealthy... If that is a diseased place of, in you mm. and now it's causing you to now have unrealistic expectations, then I think it becomes toxic. Yeah, because you have you have some men who are not get, who are not uh, having it up or satisfying their spouse. And so she just, you know, pulls out the dildo from up underneath the bed and like, fine, I'll do it myself. All right. Hey, guys. So <laughs> this has been... Uh, this has been a good episode. I thank you guys uh, for tuning in. And hopefully it is the, truth, the conversation though. has been for your viewing pleasures. Uh, okay. um, I hope that you've gotten something out of this. And I know we got a little ridiculous. No, episode. it's the truth. That uh, happens. That's why these expectations have to be discussed. Because I if, I, if I have a high sex drive and you're like, Babe, I'm tired. Like I didn't work all day. I got this business I'm running. I didn't preach. And here you coming up the steps. I'm... And I'm like, well, bunk it then. I'll just reach up underneath the bed and get old Charlie. And then I hear... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Charlie, that is a restaurant. I am never <laughs> going to be able to look at old Charlie's the same, man. Never in life. I used to like the oh, buns and the bread at Old Charlie's. You like the buns. Oh my wow. God. Wow. Y'all know the, the like butter, the, the butter bun. bread at wow, Old Charlie's. The butter buns. Wow, bro. Guys, you guys are, we're gonna depart. You we're, are we're, we're on going a to whole dismiss new level at this point. We're going to dismiss ourselves. We need some prayer up from, in here. Now we're judgmental. My you're, you're talking God. About, we're going to dismiss ourselves from this episode. It was good, though. I think, good. I think that that's, a, that's a, a discussion that that couples need to have with one another. Yeah. Prior to getting married, this is why premarital counseling is imperative. It is. And be healthy. Yes. As a person. Like, as a whole. Your holistic health. Yeah. And I think that'll help with, you know, expectations. Even beyond sex. But I, I do think it'll definitely help um, with sex Sex expectations. Oh, that's a good. That's good, ain't it? I like that. Sex expectations. Sex expectations. That's gonna be the name of this episode. That's it. Sex expectations. Hey y'all. Yeah. It's your boy. Bzzz. It's my love. Bzzz. And we appreciate y'all tuning in for none, for none episode of MMGA Make Marriage Great Again. Subscribe, Subscribe to the yes. YouTube yes. channel. Yes. Go to IG MMGA Podcast. 
Go to Facebook, Make Marriage Great Again Podcast, and we are hollering. Peace.